Hey, what's up, beautiful people? We are here to discuss the energies of July 2020. So there's a lot going on in the world both ways. You know, some people feel like the world's ending. Some people feel the world's just beginning. Political nuances, um, you know, governments being torn apart, shut down. The world is in chaos, all right? And with um, what we have going on here, all right, this is a month that we are going to experience sort of the ending of an era and the beginning of a new era where we're going to be sort of reborn into this new age really of Aquarius in this um, next leap. Now, of course, there's like levels to this. There's, there's like pieces of the energies that are, that are dying off, that are being created or that are being um, explored or deeper parts of us that are being activated, if you will. All right. Because let's say, um, you know, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It's only transmuted. And if you think about all, every human being in the world, really anything that's organic, really, as very complex filtration systems, right? We are filtration systems of energy. And for the entire age of Pisces, right? We're, we're, we're coming in to the end of the age of Pisces. And with the end of that and going into the age of Aquarius, we cannot bring in the same energies from that age to this age. Uh, personally, like a year ago, I wouldn't have said that we were going to be going in, in this lifetime. I figured it'd be take you know, a couple hundred more years. However, clearly, that's not the case, right? We're definitely going way faster and we're accelerating at a much higher level. And it's exposing and, and, and bringing out these new energies and in, in these new feelings and ways of being that are very, can be very confusing. It can be very, um, you know, like it can make you feel like going down a black hole, right? Like a rabbit hole that you just don't really know how to navigate. And that's why it's very important to connect with like-minded people to be able to, you know, reach out and, you know, uh, like if you res like, say you resonate with this, right? Reach out, you know, like get a reading, you know, become a part of the opportunity community, you know, or connect with some community out there that is, that you resonate with and you feel at home with because we are creating our soul families right now. And soul families are so, so important as we go into these energies. Now we have a we have a lunar eclipse coming up, right? On literally the fourth, fifth of July. This is a, a so you know there's so many sig significant aspects to this because this is uh, you know back in 1776. This is the 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 day that we declared our independence from Britain, right? Back in way back in the day, and we are also coming up to the cusp of uh, the Pluto return. All right, which is, it's not going to be exact for about another year and a half, but still it's right, it's really close. All right, so this is an ending of an era for our, for the United States, but also for the world and for, for the collective unconscious. And as we step into this new era of consciousness, there's a lot of division, right? And Saturn comes back into Capricorn literally on July 1st, 29 degrees. Okay, now 29 degrees is, is uh, significant because first, Saturn rules Capricorn, so it's, it's at home there, it's most powerful. And second, because uh, it's, it's finishing up these, these issues that we experienced, you know, in the last six, seven, eight months before Saturn went to Aquarius. So Saturn went to Aquarius and we got a real feel for what's going on, right, you know, or what's going to be happening in, for the next two and a half years. But now, but now we have to go back and we have to master or finish you know, like the lessons that Saturn wanted to teach us in Capricorn. Okay. It's very important to really understand where all this is going because we have, th this is all about us doing the inner work inside of our own internal Capricorn energies. Capricorn energies are very, very strong right now. I myself, I'm a Capricorn sun. So I'm feeling this big time right now with, um, with this next six months and with this lunar eclipse, coming through, we are ending this two and a half year uh, cycle of the nodal axis, right? This is the energy that is finishing up the lessons that we need to learn. So remember when we had like the big eclipses in 2017, right? That kicked off this last two years of massive learn lessons in within and also in our, in our country. And uh, now this is demanding that we stand up into our power and we wake up and we explore who we really are, who, what we really want, and we're restructuring our consciousness literally at the DNA level. This is activating our DNA. There are certain people out there that do not want us to activate our DNA. They want us to stay controlled, to stay safe, to stay, uh, you know, um, 
uh, obedience, if you will. But this Uranian energy, this like Uranian aspect, Uranus is about revolution. It's about evolution. It's about, you know, be, all this uh, next level, basically, like this next level shit. Okay. So it's everything's being broken down to be rebuilt in, in, a, in a higher, more elevated manner. And when I say elevated, I mean, it's a higher vibration. Okay, the higher the vibration, we cannot carry the guilt, the shame, the, the uh, you know, all, the in, all these insecurities, all these fears, all this pain. It cannot come with us. So it has to go. And when it goes, it comes out through the physical body. In our five senses, we feel it. So a lot of people are feeling this shit right now. And, but when we go into that place, we feel like, damn, something's wrong. Something's, something's got to give. Like, you feel like everything's going to end. And that, what's going to end is our identity with this part this pain it needs to be sat down over there and thank it for everything that has taught us but here's the thing all that pain all that energy it has something to teach us and with this lunar eclipse coming up in capricorn it's bringing up all these parts all these these archetypes of our identity and especially especially if you're a cardinal sign aries cancer libra or capricorn you're gonna be feeling this big time so check your um sun your sun rising and moon signs because uh, those are the three major players, so to speak, in the energetic realm of your experience. So as this is going on, all right, there's a, quite a bit of an ego death in all of us. Now we can fight that and try to keep things the same, but let, look, let's face it, nothing's staying the same, okay? Nothing is gonna stay the same. And really who wants it to stay the same? Shit's crazy right now, right? So it's either we evolve in this higher vibration and we face these triggers that are going on. It's these triggers that are going on within us that are trying to teach us. But when we take those triggers and we project them out into the world, that is where we just create more of that, of that dark, nasty energy. We sort of go into a, into a downward spiral, if you will, of this negative energy. Whatever we think about, whatever we put our energy into and focus right on, manifestation is happening instantly. So we're, we're, we're manifesting these energies instantaneously as we, as we think about what we're doing. So it's really important not to just fake it till you make it and focus on the good, even if you have a whole big pile of shit right here that needs to be looked at. You got to look at your stuff, right? But don't get stuck to the point where you get stuck in what I call woundology, right? Say like, oh, it's not fair. My boyfriend, my girlfriend cheated on me or, you know, life isn't fair. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting paid enough for my services or whatever it is, okay? This victim mentality, this self-sabotaging mentality, this wounded child mentality, which is all in my, in my free uh, ebook. You can go ahead and download that at my website, spiritsbodybuilder.com. But all these, all these survival type archetypes are coming up and coming out and they need to be looked at, okay? Because when we look at these things and we take responsibility for our lives, which can be a scary thing, because then you can't, you know, like you can't just lay around like, fuck, all right, it's me. I got to acknowledge it and like, because... At the end of the day, we invite all these experiences into our lives for a reason, okay? Trust me, I get it. I've been through a ton of shit. And for a while, I was like, why is all this happening to me? Why, why, why? Why, is, why am I being punished? You know what? We're not being punished. We're being shown. And once you are able to level up and look at it in that way, then you become free from these, these survival type mentalities. But that requires you to take responsibility and take action in your life. And this can hit you physically, like you could feel physically sick, like, oh, this sucks, oh my God, I don't know what to do. Like my heart's broken, I feel crappy. And, and, and I, I get it, guys, this is not easy stuff, okay? But you gotta wake up. It is time to wake up. And that's what this, the ending of this Capricorn Cancer nodal axis cycle is talking about. We are now sort of dipping into the Sagittarius Gemini cycle, but simultaneously finishing up this Capricorn Cancer cycle for the ne this next six months. And on top of that, we're adding in Mars and its home sign of Aries. And this is going to be squaring all that energy in Capricorn. Okay. With that square, you know, I, I'm Aries rising. So I've lived with, you know, my, my ascendant squaring my son my entire life. And for a long time, I felt like, damn, I got to learn lessons, like, all my lessons the hard way, right? No. I mean, that was a belief system for a very long time. And that may be a belief system for a lot of you right now that like, fuck, dude, like 
everything's hard. Everything's got to be difficult. Like why is every, it's because everybody is, is, is putting their belief system out there and there's so much projection that when someone projects something onto you, then that hits your wounded child, your victim, your, your internal shit going on here. And then you're like, ah, fuck you. And then you, and then you project it back on them. Look, nobody's listening to anybody right now. It's all projection, projection, projection. So if you're sitting there trying to convince somebody of your truth, when their truth is something opposite, you are not going to get anywhere. It's going to be a stalemate. There is no movement right there anymore. So what do you do? Instead of feeding that narrative, instead of feeding that bullshit, you have to go within and look at your own shit and be like, okay, this is why this is happening. So how can I change it? I need to change the way I respond within and allow these, the, these triggers to teach you you're like, you know what? I'm going to stop focusing on this. I'm sick and tired of dealing with your drama and bullshit. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to learn about something that I'm passionate about. I can't tell you how many people that I work with and I know that are just like, oh shit, I didn't realize that I'm really passionate about, you know, doing this over here. Or I'm really passionate about studying this over here. And then once you start putting your energy into that, it's like, shoo, 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 shoo. it happens. It manifests just as fast. And then good things start to happen and create. You have to trust. You have to have faith and believe that you deserve to have what you want in life, okay? But it comes with sacrificing that old paradigm, that old survival archetype in your identity. So we are going through a collective identity death this month, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at the charts and see exactly what's going on. As the month starts on July, on July 1st, um, we have Saturn now at 29 degrees, of Capricorn. Okay. So now Saturn is back in its home signs going over all the stuff that, you know, we thought we had, you know, dealt with or been there, but this is like refining th everything we started at the beginning of the year. Now it's like, we need to refine. We need to sort of revamp. We're going to be look taking a deeper look at it so that we can figure out how to make it better and how to really set the solid foundation and grow it from a place of, um, a real true like knowing and look at this i just uh, this uh, this chart that i pulled up just also happens to have a yod right here july 1st 2024 39 p.m pacific standard time between saturn the moon and the north node so boom coming into july and and you know and uh you know a yod is the finger of god this is destiny guys okay so this is saying hey look you know saturn is going to be teaching you some lessons on how to, on, on where you need to break this shit down and where you need to grow and where are we going? Like what, what future do you want to see? And this is going to make it emotional and intuitive. All right. This is saying we, and, and with the North node at 29 degrees as well, this is exact. Okay. And of course the moon will be exact at some point too, because the moon's moving uh, pretty fast, but th th this is huge. All right. This is destiny calling us saying, Hey, we need to do something. We need to move forward with this. And what is Gemini, the North node Gemini? It's community. It's not paying attention to all this outside world bullshit. It's about creating a safe, comfortable, vulnerable, happy place in your town, in your bubble, all right? You create a bubble of good people that you know and trust and that you can lean on and count on when shit gets weird and shit gets tough. So if you're surrounded with a whole lot of toxic energy, you need to get away from that shit and you need to find some good, healthy, productive, prosperous energy. And when we have that, things are just gonna blow up in a good way explode because manifestation, like I said, is happening very, very fast. All right. And, uh, and with manifestation happening fast, if, if you're, if you're manifesting positive things, it's going to be happening big and fast and boom, 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 especially right after this Pluto Jupiter conjunction, second of three, they're both retrograde. This is internal seeing all these things moving into this next phase. All right. We're digging deeper into our consciousness, deeper than we've ever gone before. We are going deep. Yeah. So on the fourth, we uh, fourth, uh, very late on the fourth into the fifth, we're going to be having a lunar eclipse at 13 degrees. Um, and on the same day, Uranus will be going to 10 degrees as well. And, uh, you know, when Uranus changes digits, uh, that's significant as well. We can expect to see some changes in the stock market or in the economy because, you know, Taurus represents uh, uh, actually, um, uh, Taurus represents evolution. Um, in uh, in uh, technology, uh, and Taurus represents um, the earth, the ground, uh, agriculture, all like the systems of like the physical world. 
So we're going to see some stuff going on uh, with the financial system, probably with the agricultural system, a lot of changes and reforms, things like that. So just be ready for, uh, for uh, and, and this could also mean like earthquakes and, you know, natural disasters and things like that. And, you know, it comes into double digits. Now it's coming into the second deacon. So it's actually coming into this new level of this uranium energy too, which, you know, when Uranus makes changes, it makes changes. It's unpredictable. It's unknown. It's like, it's shocking. It's what the fuck just happened. And clearly we've been having a lot of that lately. All right. And, uh, you know, we have, um, you know, the moon and even, uh, we have, uh, so this Saturn is kind of square. It's a very loose square. I'd say it's more square to Black Moon Lilith. All right, but um, we have Mars also heading into uh, conjunction with Chiron. That's going to be fun. <laughs> uh, so this lunar eclipse is going to be massive uh, for, and, and of course, Mercury is still retrograde here too. So we're looking over old things, all right, where... Uh, you know, old things that we thought that we wanted, that we want to keep, that we want to have, um, that are just not serving us anymore. And seeing it for what it is and growing through it and allowing it to go bye-bye. But in order for it to go bye-bye, we have to learn the lesson, okay? Um, so that lesson is going to be learned. And if, you're, if, if we're in resistance, if we're, you know, fighting it in any way, shape, or form, then it may be a little tough, all right? Uh, but, you know, th so this is where like learning to let go and be okay with not being okay or just letting it be what it is, is going to be incredibly important. And of course, right after this lunar eclipse, we're going to have the moon conjuncting over to Jupiter, Pluto and Saturn, which is freaking huge. And then, you know, also right around the same time we have uh, on the fourth, we have Pluto going to 23 degrees. So every time an outer planet goes a degree, you know, and this is in retrograde. So it's going, um, you know, into back into that deeper territory to teach us something. All right. So we're going to be going over some old stuff. <laughs> be like, people be like, why bring up old shit? You know, because you haven't learned it yet. You haven't fully processed it yet. Okay. So we, and, and, you know, Pluto is that deep, dark and with, and with Jupiter right there. Now Jupiter is traveling a little faster. So Jupiter is going to be like really expanding deeper into that consciousness and opening up these these pathways in our consciousness in the in the in the in the fiber of our dna guys like this is activating dna this is huge and we gotta just allow it to happen it's like <laughs> it's like yeah yeah i'm not gonna use that example that's a little <laughs> so moving on um so we're also going to be having throughout the month uh for most of the month we're going to be having uh venus uh, in sextile with Mars, which is really, really profound in my opinion and really great because this is where, you know, this year has been about the first six months has been about the divine feminine uh, purifying itself, right? Identifying how like a relationship with money, like collectively and individually, our relationship with relationships, um, our relationship with love, what we really desire, what we really want, how we want to look, how we want to feel. Okay. And with it being sextile to Mars and Mars is in his home sign now, um, you know, we're going to be seeing, like, okay, now Mars wants to express itself, the divine masculine, get out there and make something happen, the passion, the, the drive, the willpower, let's make it happen, let's get shit done, right? I believe in something. So whatever it is that you believe in, um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's going to start to mesh with the divine feminine of, okay, I'm going to receive and I'm going to give. And I want to invite everything into my life that is going to allow me to receive and to give equally. This is the goal, okay? And this is purging out the things that are not giving that to us. All right, now let's see here. Um, on the 9th, we're going to be having uh, Jupiter heading back to 22 degrees of Capricorn. Again, each, each, each degree is significant. And this is right around, we had the, uh, it, these degrees also is right around, we had a couple eclipses here in the last couple of years. So we are literally traversing these energies like, you know, over and over again, this is, we're right in the middle of it. So we're going deeper and then it's going to come back direct. And the last one later on around, um, uh, at least for Jupiter around November of this year is when we're going to solidify this learn lesson and bring it into its full completion. Okay. Also the North and South node are moving to 28 degrees. Okay. So now we're moving forward into this area of the, um, of the nodal axis, um, digging deeper into really, um, forming these, these new, um, you know, soul families, the, these new belief structures and, and, and uh, creating this new world that we, that we want to live in. Okay. And then on the 11th, um, 
Chiron is going to go retrograde. So, uh, and, and on that day, the moon and Mars are, Mars will be at eight degrees. The moon will be coming over eight, nine degrees. And then Chiron, of course, nine degrees going retrograde. So this day is going to be incredibly powerful because, you know, um, Chiron is that wounded healer. All right. Now when it goes retrograde, we're going back into these, um, these vulnerabilities that we've been expressing and experiencing. Uh, but with Mars here coming into this conjunction, especially with the moon here, right here, this makes it very, Mars doesn't like vulnerability. And so Mars like, fuck, I got to do something about this vulnerability. Right. So it wants to move forward. It wants to make something happen. And this is also going to be square over to Mercury retrograde. So this is making us really emotional. And, you know, cancer represents the emotion. It also uh, represents the home and family. All right. And while we're in cancer season, this is bringing up these deep emotions about what we really desire, what we really feel, what we feel maybe that we don't deserve or what we can't have. Okay. All this self sacrificing energy that we've been doing for too long that we need to transcend and bring it to fruition about what we really love and want. Okay. But again, still, Venus is still sextile, this energy. So that helps to give it a little bit of more of a nurturing edge, but it's going to be vulnerable. So we have to embrace that vulnerability, guys. Like 100%, you know, like one day at a time. And this is where, like, when you're feeling vulnerable, you need to reach out to those people. Hey, I'm feeling this type of way. Like, can you help me navigate this? And when you have someone that understands and doesn't judge you for what you're feeling, it's really great feeling. And you just releases it. Get, you know, let that throat chakra open up, get it out, and, you know, allow yourself to be free of it. It's just, shoo, just get rid of it, okay? We don't need to carry this stuff anymore, all right? So uh, on, the, um, on the 12th, hallelujah, Mercury will be going direct at five degrees of Cancer, all right? So now we're out of that retrograde, so we have a little bit more forward-moving energy. Well, of course, you know, Chiron sort of negates that a little bit, but Chiron's an outer planet. You know, I actually kind of like Chiron retrograde, maybe because I have that in my chart, but you know, Chiron retrograde is just, it's, we're not having to learn more vulnerable lessons. We're going back over the vulnerable lessons that we already learned and getting more clarity or understanding about those vulnerabilities. So, you know, Mercury direct is going to be good, especially like, as you can see my background, my virtual background for some reason is working on my computer, Mercury retrograde, but you know, I'm still moving forward and still doing this anyways. And you know, it is what it is. You got to just keep playing a game and keep making it happen. Right. So on the 13th, is when we have Mer Mers <laughs> Mars exactly conjunct to Chiron. All right. So that day is especially going to be very vulnerable. You know, just allow it to be okay. It is what it is. Um, you're going to have to process some stuff. This is where um, I have a feeling that we're going to start having, um, you know, the world like government's going to start to like, they're probably going to halt um, international travel um maybe even interstate travel like things like there there's a lot of compression energy especially with all this stuff now in capricorn again uh, and now with mars squaring it it's like they're they're not going to lock it down they're going to call it something else okay but for our safety all right but we really need to keep an eye on this and pay attention because with all this contraction you know with supposed for our safety is actually uh, you know we have to be careful of this totalitarian control dynamic that 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 capricorn essentially represents because um you know before we know it you know we could have some really bad stuff happening and then you know we might be stuck and we can't get out of it so we cannot let them get too powerful we have to make sure that we're standing up speaking our truth creating our voice and helping people because in all actuality there, there's a lot of illusion and delusion going on i'm not going to make this political i'm going to keep it energetic but seriously we need to wake up and see how they're trying to manipulate uh, manipulate us because for real like this whole thing there's a lot of scandalous shit going on okay and if you want to stand up if you want to be free truly free you have to raise your vibration and get out of this victim mode and there are powers that be out there this is a spiritual warfare the powers that be are are feeding on those victim mentalities. They're feeding on the wounded child. They're feeding on, on the, the, the internal victim. So that when it comes out, like, yeah, see, you need us, you need us, you need this vaccine, you need to stay home, you need to wear this mask, you need to blah, 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 blah. It's all bullshit. We don't need any of that shit, okay? Just saying, stay healthy, focus on, focus on what you love. The, the, real, the real pandemic here is the fear mongering, is the news, is the bullshit that they keep lying to you about. It's all propaganda. Back in the day, they used to use leaflets and things like that. Now it's all digital. 
okay? We have to stand up for ourselves. And the, and the only way we can actually see it is when we face our own shit. And the, these and, and these energy this month is going to really be encouraging us to look at our shit. And if you don't, it's going to make things real uncomfortable. Just saying, okay? So on the 15th, we have, um, we have uh, Saturn moving to 28 degrees. Um, so again, those, those degrees are, uh, are very important. And we have, of course, Mars now moving past Chiron. But, uh, you, know, you know, Mars is going to end up retrograding here in a couple months. So, and now Mars is going to be conjunct Black Moon Lilith here on the, uh, it's in between the 16th and 17th because Lilith moves very quickly. So now we have Mars, Chiron, and Lilith all in the mix. So what does this mean? Man, this is like, this is just wanting to go out and go on a sexual rampage. This is like, this sexual energy is going to be like heightened. It's going to be amped. It's going to be like, I just want to get out there and, and feel good. Right. So this is what we, we got to be careful with this because, you know, if we go looking for the wrong stuff, we're going to connect to the wrong energies and that's just going to dig ourselves in a deeper hole because, you know, those spiritually transmitted diseases are real. They're no joke and they're out there and they're looking for good people like you and I to feed on. We have to be careful. We have to protect ourselves. And um, also we have now Jupiter down to 21 degrees and Jupiter's moving fast and retrograde. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's got to cover this area uh, real quick, but this is still like internally, like building up this steam to become way empowered. This is a super empowering energy. If you let it, if you accept it, if you allow yourself to go through the birthing process of creating this deeper version of who you are. Okay. So on the 20th, we have uh, a new moon at 28 degrees of Cancer. So this is going to be the uh, this is going to be the second uh, new moon in Cancer. Of course, the first one was at zero degrees. Now this one is at is at a master number, and uh, you know so this is going to sort of like now this is not an eclipse because we have the north and south node uh, now fully into Gemini and Sagittarius. But this is again sort of like the finishing touches on that Cancerian energy. We know what we want. The universe has showed us exactly what's going on in our consciousness, how to do it, where to do it, why to do it. So if we're not following it, this is going to be like locked into place. So it's really important. You got to follow, you, you got to follow your heart. You got to make it happen. Um, and I'm going to go more into that eclipse here uh, when I do the actual, I mean, I'm sorry, the, uh, the uh, new moon when I do that video in and of itself for that. Okay. So on the 22nd, uh, we have the sun entering Leo. So happy birthday to all my Leos out there. Um, and it just so happens on the 22nd, boom, look, comes up to another yod. Uh, in fact, one, yeah, there's only one yod here. Um, so this yod is between actually two yods. I'm sorry. We have two yods on the 22nd as, uh, as, as we go into Leo season in the moon, when, when the sun is at zero degrees, which is a master number, the moon will be at 29 degrees, which is also a master number and on top of Regulus. So this yacht is pointing to Regulus, opening up the heart chakra, turning to us, say, hey, you need, it's time to step into your leadership role. It's time to step into your power of who you are. And this is between Saturn and Black Moon Lilith at zero degrees of Aries, which is also a master number. Bam. Okay. And then the moon. So this is activating in a very deep way. This like, okay, I got to take responsibility. I got to grow. This is what I want. And this is also your sexual energy. Like at zero degrees of Aries, this is the very, very first degree of the Zodiac. Okay. So this is activating this deep, really like intense, sort of like lusty, but like, like, like I need to make this happen. Like things are going to change. I'm going to make shit happen. And it doesn't matter how, where, why. And then we also have, this you got from the moon to the north node pointing to Saturn. So a lot of Saturnian energy is going to be very powerful this month because a 28 degrees is still a master number. So these energies are just really vibrating like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You may feel like you're, you're like almost driving energetically or being pulled like a puppet on a string into this future of the unknown. That is, um, that is very, like uh, it's exciting, but it's, it's nerve. It's unnerving at the same time. Like you don't know where you're going, but you know, you got to go there. All right, so be ready for a lot of destined energies, a destined faded things to happen that are gonna come into your life. They're gonna make things happen in a very major way in all of our lives, okay? Um, on the 25th, uh, Jupiter will hit 20 degrees going to the very first degree of the second deacon. 
So this is again, like almost like going back to the foundation, going back to the beginning of this Jupiterian energy. Okay. Like, so whatever we started, you know, about, you know, October, November, the, the ideas that we had last year, what have, what has come to fruition? What are we going to do about it? What are we making happen? Okay. So that we can optimize it and make it much better. Okay. And on the 29th, we have uh, Venus coming out of shadow, so, which is going to be very, very exciting because now that, that that divine feminine is like, all right, I'm fresh. Um, I'm good. I'm ready to, you know, create this community and I'm, and I'm ready to step into this next version of who I'm meant to be. And it's coming up on the North node as well. It's not going to hit till August, but you know, that's, that's destiny calling for that divine feminine. And uh, you know, we have, um, we have Mars still in its home sign, 17 degrees. It's moving quick. Uh, we have Saturn going to 27 degrees um, on this day as well. So these planets are moving fast, big things happening, going over a lot of old stuff that maybe we thought was done, or maybe we're finally getting some like, you know, putting the final nail in the coffin to parts of ourselves that no longer need to, um, they're no longer serving us. They're no longer uh, uh, being of service for our highest and best good. This is a month of massive transformation, of massive transition, and of massive change. So allow it to happen, allow it, uh, allow this energy to take you into this next dimension uh, so that you don't, so you don't get stuck. Because if you stay attached to these old ways, if you stay, if you try to hide or avoid feeling these things, number one, you're not gonna be able to avoid them. It's just gonna, it's gonna hurt you. It's gonna make you feel like shit. But um, you know, also it, you're gonna, th this is setting the foundation for the rest of our lives, okay? And we have to really have the courage to stand in that, in this unknown, and allow it to purge, baby. Allow it to purge, allow it to cleanse so that we can live our lives to the fullest, you know, of our capability and capacity. And a lot of that is done through letting go, not trying to take control, not, to not trying to figure it out, just surrender and allow the universe to raise our vibration naturally and just go with it, all right? So thank you guys very much for tuning in, for liking, for sharing, for, for subscribing. If, if, this, um, if this content resonates with you, please share this information. We need as many people as possible, you know, to see this, Maybe a little nugget will spark, you know, an, a, a question or a new understanding of what they're feeling inside so that we can wake people up. And if you're interested in a reading uh, or downloading my free ebook or uh, joining the amazing opportunity community where like-minded people like you and I are getting together and we're doing the work and we're networking and we're creating business ideas and branding and just helping people out work through their shit. Okay, all that is available on my website in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I appreciate you very much. I love y'all. I hope you have a great July. Namaste. I'll see you on the next report.